and exceptional. Hey, I was muted on there. I just thought we needed something to be happy about to start today's show there. So, yeah, Noel V. Marte hitting a home run in spring training. That's what we're going to go with. And this is the Locked On Reds podcast because I got two words for you that we're talking about today. Jason Vossler. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker, is actually trapped in the comments section because he's trapped in the Phoenix airport. Uh, hopefully, he gets home soon. But we are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that are addicted to this team. We have turned our addiction into information for you. Locked On Reds is part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day, and we thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to uh, myself talk some Reds with you. And we are live here before the Wednesday afternoon game of Hunter Green and Marcus Stroman and the Reds and the Cubs at Great American Ballpark. So make sure you drop into the comments section, say hello, Give me a comment. Give me a question. Uh, and, and if you're listening to this after the fact, make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Jeff Carr with three Fs, or you can hit Steve at S Offenbaker with two Fs because talking Reds is what we do. And we want to talk Reds with you. And on today's podcast, we are going to talk about the awesomeness that is Jason Bossler. Everybody's asking the question, so we're going to talk about it see the next Brandon Drury plus Hunter Green is looking to bounce back in a big way today I'm going to tell you why I think he will and you know what yeah we'll talk about last night's loss we'll talk about the loss on Tuesday night look it's fine it, we're going to be fine we're, we're all fine here now fine how how are you by the way uh today's pro podcast is brought to you by FanDuel this episode uh, is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And where we are going to start today is with the man who's been playing the most first base since Joey Votto's been on the IL. That's Jason Vossler. These first five games have been absolutely phenomenal. And there's a lot of people that are asking, who is this guy? Where did he come from? And quite frankly, over the offseason, whenever the Reds added him, we were kind of like, oh, fine, sure. I had two major league seasons under his belt, and the most at-bats he had in either one of them was 98 at-bats. So he's not a guy that we could claim we really know anything about. Plus, he's 29 years old. We're not talking about him being in the same category as some of our 24, 25-year-old guys. But when I look at Jason Vossler, he embodies everything we talked about. We had a, um, when we were, when we're talking about Brandon Drury, we had an episode this spring training that we said, who is the next Brandon Drury? And he was not really a guy we talked about very much. And I think that makes him even more of a Brandon Drury than we thought any of the other guys could be because Brandon Drury literally came out of nowhere. So if you expect somebody to be good, then they're not Brandon Drury. In fact, Jason Vossler may actually be creating an own, his own category all himself. He's got some crazy stats. I don't know if some of you have seen. I, I know on Twitter, um, Joel Luckup shared the tweet uh, that he is now tied for the most hits in a major league season without a single. He has five hits. None of them are singles. It's absolutely phenomenal. And it's not like he's trying to do this right? Like we, we talk about, you know, Will Benson looks like he's pressing. Um, there's, there's some different guys that look like they're really trying. They're really trying to win over everybody on the very first week of the season. That's not what Jason Vossler is about. You know, it makes it easier just kind of trying to do the little things right. Not trying to do too much. And a lot of times when I try to do too much is when I struggle. So um, that last step or that home run at bat, I was just kind of trying to get a single, trying to hit him in, and uh, you know, good things happen when you don't try to do too much. 
Now that was after the Cubs win after the win over the Cubs in the first game when he hit the three run home run, the go ahead three run home run that we were all just like, who is this guy? And, and it's awesome to see that he's just going up there with a simple mind. I, I think every baseball coach I ever had growing up always told me that just put the bat on the ball, just put the ball in play, and you know, good things will happen. That's what Jason Vossler is trying to do, and it's really paying off. And when we say he came out of nowhere, like last season was just his second year of the big leagues. He was 28 years old with the Giants. He only got 98 at bats. Now, he made the most of those. He had a OPS plus of 127. He hit well in his second year, despite not playing very much. And the question has been asked with Jason Vossler and how well he's playing what happens when Joey Votto comes up? And I have a couple of thoughts on that, but Jason Vossler is not, um, it's not a new thing for him to play sporadically. You know, I go about my work in a, in a normal way, just preparing for every day. And that's kind of regardless of where I'm at, like where it's, whether it's the off season or if I'm down in AAA or spring training, um, you know, it's just kind of playing that day and that at bat and that play in the field, one play at a time and uh, hoping for the best. He was a 16th round draft pick for the Cubs 16th. We're not talking about a guy that even when he was drafted, there was a lot of expected of him. So he has worked his way through the minor leagues. If you've watched the television broadcast, if you've listened to Tommy throw on the cowboy talking about Jason Vossler, you know that he is not your prototypical, like he's going to blow up type of dude. Like you, you drafted late, spends a lot of time in the minor leagues, working his way through the minors. He didn't go to a big school, wasn't from an SEC school or anything like that. He just plays the game. And when it comes to, you know, he's he's fine playing sporadically, but also it's, it's interesting to note, like he's played either at DH or first base since um, the beginning of the season, but that's not really his natural position. In fact, he has played some first base, but he's mostly played third base in his career. And he was asked about, you know, playing first base. And he had a couple of nice defensive plays in that win over the Cubs. Yeah, you know, just trusting kind of the work I put in over there. Um, it's not a new position for me by any means, but, um, you know, playing it every day is kind of a new thing. So, you know, just getting the work in before the game and even going back to spring training, talking to Joey, um, you know, it's helped a lot. And I feel good over there now. There's a role for him on this team when, when Joey comes up and shout out, uh, shout out to David who had this uh, comment. He said, you know, Reds might have a diamond in the rough who won't have a roster spot due to the Reds stupidly carrying three catchers. He's going to have a roster spot because he's going to be kind of a corner infielder slash DH left-handed bat. He's not going anywhere. I think what happens most likely whenever they call Joey up is they send Stuart Fairchild down. Because I think Stuart Fairchild was kind of the last man on the roster. Anyway, I think Jason Vossler was going to make this team if Joey Votto was healthy. And I think that the Reds have seen the work that he has put in. This is something that when, when I think of the way that the roster is built for the Reds, there's still plenty of opportunity for Jason Vossler to continue making a name for himself. I, I think that good things will continue to come for him and – there's going to be a lot of intrigue. I, I know that part of the idea of a guy being a, you know, the next Brandon Drury is you know, could the Reds trade him for extra assets and stuff. I don't necessarily know that Jason Vossler fits into that mold. I think even if he's hitting like 20 home runs at the all-star break, any other, like any opposing general manager in a negotiation with Nick crawl is going to say, how much am I really giving up for this guy? who literally came out of nowhere. I don't necessarily know we're going to get a, a crazy amount, uh, but I, I, I love the fact that he is absolutely playing phenomenally well right now. And the way that uh, he's, he's kind of taken on to this lineup, just doing what he can. That's all you need to do. And that's all I want Will Benson to do. I still think Will Benson can be very good. Uh, it's just, you know, the nine strikeouts and 11 at bats isn't very inspiring right now. I think he's going to bounce back. I got, I got, um, I got some faith. He's going to bounce back, but you know what? A guy who's going to bounce back in a big way today is Hunter green. 
And coming up, I'm going to tell you exactly why I think that's going to happen. Before we talk about that, though, I want to tell you about one of today's sponsors, and that is FanDuel. You know, FanDuel is the perfect companion app for you during the baseball season, whether you're looking for the best odds on Reds games, if you want to check out games around the league or things like that, they have you covered with point spread or run lines, money lines, the over-unders, great prop bets and stuff like that. And you can check them out today for a $1,000 no sweat first bet. That's right. $1,000. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to take advantage of that today. That'll be bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. And speaking of your first bet, maybe it's uh, on today's game. In fact, there's an interesting prop uh, Reds win combination of Hunter Green striking out six or more guys and the Reds winning. And the VIG, or you know, the odds on that, is plus 145. So that's a value. You put $10 on that, you're going to get $14.50 back whenever it hits because Hunter Green's going off today. I'm, I'm thinking like seven innings. I'm thinking a bunch of strikeouts. He's going to be efficient with his pitches. We'll talk about why here in just a moment. But I want to continue talking about FanDuel because uh, they've got this no sweat first bet that you have to take advantage of. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more about how you can get $1,000 back in no sweat first bets. Make every moment more with FanDuel. They're the official sports book of Locked On. And if you're wanting to make a couple extra bucks on your sports betting, check out Locked On Bets. It's just like Locked On Reds. It's free and available on all podcasting platforms. Lee Sterling is a uh, professional handicapper for Paramount Sports. He's going to help you make a couple of bucks each and every day. It's Locked On Bets, just like Locked On Reds. It's every single day. Coming up tomorrow, Steve will be back, and we'll be talking about the Reds' trip to Philadelphia. The the Phillies just got off of the uh, beaten, totally beaten. If you're unbeaten, are you totally beaten? Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. They they got their first win of the season last night, so they're they're off the schneid. We're not going to be talking about okay, can the Phillies, um, you know, just bounce back in a big way against the Reds? We'll we'll see what happens in that series. It's going to be a tough one. Definitely the best team that the Reds have played of the three they've played so far. But let's talk about Hunter Green today. Because coming up here in just a little bit at 1235, the Reds will square off with the Cubs in the rubber match. Marcus Stroman's on the mound and Hunter Green opposes him. Hunter Green had eight strikeouts in his first start. And yet we still call it a bad start because he only got 10 outs. Now think about that for a minute. Yes, you definitely want your starting pitcher to go more than three and a third innings. But 80% of his outs were strikeouts. That that's the that's the ultimate, like, holy cow, like six one half the uh, half half dozen the other. Like in one hand, you can talk about how bad it was, and in another hand, it was a really good start. Just the way that he was able to uh, get those guys out. The problem was he threw too many pitches to do those eight strikeouts. Too many favorable counts. There were so many guys he was starting like 0-2, 1-2, and then he would turn it into 3-2 in the blink of an eye because with the pitch clock, it happens in the blink of an eye. But that that ran his pitch count up so bad. He threw 83 pitches to get 10 outs. That's not good. That's never good. Like, And he knows that. So coming into this game, he's going to be bouncing back in a big way. I felt like he only threw the change up a couple of times in that opening day start. You saw a lot of the fastball. You saw a lot of the slider, you saw a lot of fastballs to guys that hit fastballs really well. And this Cubs lineup hits fastballs really well. So I'm, I'm hoping he mixes the slider in a lot more, hoping he mixes in the change up a lot more. The change up wasn't getting him out of at bats like it was in spring training. That was something that he had really worked on so far as, all right, I'm, I'm throwing a lot of pitches to this guy. I need to reset and get back to the next batter. I'm just going to throw him a changeup, get a ground ball, get out of here. I didn't see that on opening day last Thursday. That, that wasn't part of his game. That has, that has to be part of his game moving forward. Because as much as we would love him to strike out 80% of the batters he faced, and he'd be the only guy in the history of baseball ever to do that in a large enough sample size, um, then I, I, I want him to pitch deeper into the games. I'm thinking today he goes seven innings. We're talking about, you know, he, he got to watch Nick Lodolo, who he didn't have the best of starts, but he bounced back in a big way and still threw five innings. And then Graham Ashcraft showed them all up 
with that amazing seven inning start on Sunday. So Hunter Green's looking to bounce back. You know, these guys have a friendly competition, right? Teammates, they want to see each other succeed, but on the other end of the spectrum, they're all competitors. And there's no way that Hunter Green's just going to be like, yeah, yeah, Graham Ashcraft's the best guy. You know, I'll, I'll see if I can be number two or number three or something like that. No, they all want to be number one. So he's going to bounce back in a big way. I really feel like Hunter Green is about to shut down this Cubs lineup today for seven strong innings. And I'm going to tell you why that's so important for the bullpen coming up here in a little bit. But overall, I, I think that through his career, Hunter Green has shown the ability to adjust. And yes, I say career as if it's been a long time. It's only been one year. But last season, he had problems with the long ball. He had problems with too many pitches. And then you saw what he did in the second half of the season. He has this ability to adjust, to change, to get better. And, and, and I think that he's going to do that here today. And David Bell is going to love that because he's been going to the bullpen way, way, way too much. Uh, I, I'm interested in your thoughts because – Overall, I feel like Hunter Green is the kind of guy that everybody's sort of ambivalent on. Like, I think we love Hunter Green, but we're not in love with Hunter Green, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not that way. I still think he's the ace. I still think this dude is going to be the dude who gets the Cy Young Award eventually, maybe multiple Cy Young Awards in his career. But I feel like with those high expectations, and Steve and I have talked about this before, we've almost put him on so high a pedestal that the fact that he's not there yet means that people like him less. And I think that that's not, that's not cool. That's not something that we should really uh, be talking about here. I know uh, Lockdown Pirates is in the chat here talking some trash with uh, Steve in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that's joining in today. And make sure you do jump into the chat. Um, I, I really think that overall, this is going to be a good game for hunter green you know as much as i hate to talk about a game like last night's we're, we're we're gonna do it because look tuesday night's game sucked there's no two ways about it but coming up next i'll tell you why it's only one loss before we do that though i want to tell you about another one of today's sponsors and that's ultimate gm uh really excited about this app because i've been playing it it's a very addictive game you get to be the general manager of a baseball team. The Ultimate GM app puts you in control of everything, whether you're talking about trades, signings, coaching staffs, prices for concessions at your team stadium. You can upgrade facilities. You can do all this different stuff to build a dynasty. And you can build your dynasty today. You can go to probaseballgm.com or you can download it in the App Store or the Google Play Store. If you're watching right now, Click or scan that QR code. It'll take you right to the app. This game is so much fun. I, I, I have built a dynasty that um, it's okay. Saying it's dy we haven't won anything yet, but the Fairfield Hoagies are on their way up. You know, I got myself a nice, uh, good stable of prospects in the minor leagues, ready to call up, and we're reallocating payroll to resource. I'm just kidding. We're not going to make that old joke. But you can run your team the way that you want on the Ultimate GM app. Check it out today, and Lockdown Reds listeners get a 100% free boost to your franchise when using the promo code LOCKEDON in the game store. So make sure you check it out. Check out probaseballgm.com. Scan the code here in the corner uh, of the screen or look it up on one of the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. You can follow us in between episodes on Twitter. Follow me at Jeff Carr with three F's. You can follow Steve at S Offenbaker with two F's and you can follow the show at locked on reds. There's no F's in that. Um, I'm also on TikTok. I say that because I still haven't really done a whole lot with it other than watch other TikToks that are funny. Um, here randomly, I've gotten a bunch in my algorithm that are like you know not serious situations but they put the walking dead theme song to it and it sounds like it's a serious situation i, I kind of get that like when you go to the cereal or when you go to your pantry to eat some cereal and you're, you're out of milk <sighs> scary stuff but you know what else was scary the the bullpen the bullpen 
It was awful. Let's say there's no two ways about it. There's no, there's no positive spin here. You know, I'm optimistic Reds fan. The, the, the number one optimistic Reds fan, maybe, I don't know. There's probably some other people that think they're more optimistic than I am, but when it comes to the Reds, I'm optimistic. There's no optimistic way to talk about what happened on Tuesday night. It was a just absolute crap show. And we're going to say that because we're going to keep it PG. But when I looked at that game, just every time you turned around, you had inherited runner scoring. You had relievers walking guys. You had the defense not backing them up. It was just awful. But you know what? That happens. In 162 games, even the Astros had games like that last year. The Phillies certainly had games like that last year. The Phillies at one time weren't even sure they were making the playoffs. And then they sneak on in and then they're in the World Series. Like, you just got to get there. You just got to win enough. I really think that overall, this team is going to have more days like this, but there's also going to be days where they win 10 to nothing or 12 to five or, you know, whatever it is. They, they, there's days where the ball falls your way. There's days where the ball doesn't fall your way. What's the old, the old quote? And I never remember who say it, but you can win 50 games and you can lose 50 games every single year. It's what you do with the other 60 or 62 that make you a good or a bad team. That was just one of those 50 losses, right? Like this, the, the Reds weren't winning that game, which kind of sucks because going into the seventh inning, they had the lead. Just sometimes things just happen that way. But the biggest problem with last night was the fact that the bullpen had to get 12 more outs. And I know Luis Sessa did come out into the sixth inning, which was awesome. We were worried he was only going to pitch like four innings. And he didn't do that. He was very efficient and very good through five. It's just when he came out into the sixth, he didn't have it allowed two base runners very quickly without getting an out. And then everything started falling apart from there. But overall, that meant that the bullpen had to get 12 outs last night and they had to get 15 outs the night before. They had to pitch nine innings in two days. So essentially, chalk that up to a bullpen game. And coming into last night, there was this awesome stat that I saw on the broadcast. And I think that um, if you didn't see it, it was worth noting. In the first four games of this season, Reds pitching, whether it be, you know, Graham Ashcraft going past the fifth inning or whatnot, Reds pitching had only allowed one run after the fifth inning in each of their first four games. That wasn't going to continue. <laughs> I love, I love the Reds and I love our bullpen, but our bullpen's not that good. Like our bullpen is a middle of the, of the league type bullpen. So they had a middle of the league type bullpen day where you go from being so awesome in the first four games to being so terrible all at once. I mean, they allowed 10 of the 12 runs. That's just one of those games that you look at and you say, okay. And, and, and look, I had, I had kind of mentioned it. And I think I tweeted it out about Joe Kunal not getting a chance to pitch yet in the season. I think we saw why. Yeah, he was not good. He was really bad and he got sent down. Because of it, he's now in AAA. The Reds made a move this morning. They sent Joel Kunal to AAA, and they called up Kevin Herget, which makes me think that it might have been a coin flip between those two guys on who was going to break camp in the bullpen. Uh, because if you only give Joel Kunal one outing to prove something, and yes, it was a very, very stinky outing. But if you only give him one outing to prove something, and then you send him down to AAA when he doesn't prove it, that tells me that he barely made this team out of uh, spring training. But overall, this bullpen is going to have its ups and downs. And yes, I do think that's going to be a middle of the bullpen. Let's see here. I appreciate the comment, Nick. And I want to I want to address this because the worse and worse thing is not the case. This team is this bullpen is going to get better and better because this bullpen is getting Tony Santion back. It's going to get Lucas Sims back. It's going to get TJ Antone back. It's going to get Ricky Karcher coming up here from AAA. Kevin Herget, could he be better than Joe Kunal? Probably not that hard to be better than Tuesday night's Joe Kunal. But I, I think that the reinforcements that are coming up through the minor leagues, and we might see, who knows, we might see Connor Phillips late on the season. I think they might hold him to being like a starting pitcher uh, through the minor leagues, but we could see him brought up. But overall, I really think 
that this bullpen right now is not in its final form, right? They're going to go super saiyan when they get guys like Santion and Sims and Antone back and guys like that. And yeah, I, I do agree. You know, you got to believe it when you see it because we haven't seen a good Reds bullpen in a while, but this bullpen doesn't have to be amazing so long as the starting pitching carries it, which is why we were so concerned with Overton and Sessa in the first place. Sessa had a much better start than Connor Overton does, but I really think overall we're going to see Brandon Williamson up. We're going to see, hey, shout out OJ's 94 Bronco. You're like reading my mind here. Uh, Levi Stout's going to be up at some point. I, I kind of think probably around June uh, for him. I don't think that he's ready quite yet. Uh, they want to see some more from him at AAA, but I think he's going to show them what they want to see. So overall, I look at uh, this pitching staff as it's going to be fine. So Tuesday night, for all of the naysayers, and there are many, who really got on Twitter, and, 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 and there were a couple that texted me about, you know, yeah, you know, gosh, here we go again. We suck again. You know, right? that, that whole scene from Major League. It's like, I said they were going to win 75 games. Like, I see this team going through patches like this. There, there's going to be some nights where Jonathan India can't field a grounder that's straight to him. Or there's going to be some nights where the bullpen can't throw a strike to save their life, and then when they do, it's a beach ball, which was what was happening last night. Rivar San Martin came in, and I talked so highly of him in the first game when he had those two amazing strikeouts, and he looked the complete opposite on Wednesday night, or Tuesday night. Get my days mixed up. But I think that the true test will be if the Reds can bounce back from this, because this was the kind of game... I don't want to bring up this memory, but this was the kind of game we saw a lot of last April. And of course, if they win today, they're going to erase that memory because they will officially have more wins this April than they did last April. But the next win does that for them. So I think that overall, this is the kind of performance that the Reds can earmark and say, you know what? We're just going out and we're getting them tomorrow because they tried. The lineup tried. If the bullpen had held it to six runs and they got the five, we'd be feeling a lot differently about that loss last night. I think overall we can, we can chalk that up to, you know what? That's just one of the 50 losses that we're going to see. And we're going to move on because this team is going to be better. Uh, let's see here real quick on the comments. Usually I'll let Steve do this while I'm bloviating. Yeah, I got a couple of predictions here. Jared on vinyl, five, three reds today. Would love to see that. 5-3, give me another Jason Vossler home run. I'll take that. 4-3 is what Steve has. Love it. And, hey, Jonathan Lynn agreeing with me about Hunter Green. Appreciate you guys jumping into the chat. Um, I know solo, I don't have the ability to get onto every single comment like we usually do when Steve is with me. But like I said, Steve's kind of stuck in the Phoenix airport right now. He's down in the comment section if you want to drop him a hello. But I'm looking forward to a Reds win today. Series win, I think, coming up. Hunter Green going to lead the way. Reds is going to score just enough runs here, and we're going to get that fourth win in April, something we didn't see last year. And that is how we're going to end today's episode. Thank you all so much for joining me here today on this live pre-pregame show on the Locked On Reds podcast. Now make sure you check out the Locked On Fantasy Baseball podcast because Matt and Dom will help you win your league each and every day by highlighting good waiver wire pickups, maybe some guys you can buy low on in the trade market. That's Locked On Fantasy Baseball. It's just like Locked On Reds. It's free and available on your favorite podcasting app and right here on YouTube. For uh, Steve and myself, as we move through the season, as we're getting ready for Philadelphia tomorrow, you, you don't want to miss tomorrow's episode as we preview the series in Philly. You can expect us to be locked on Reds every single day.